This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna. I want to move on now to your tour of the commodity markets chart deck. Listeners, you'll find the download link for this chart deck in your research roundup email. Now, if you don't have a research roundup email, that means you haven't yet registered at macrovoices.com. Just go to our homepage, macrovoices.com. Click the red button that says looking for the downloads. Patrick, we've got the dollar index. And boy, look at that breakout that jumps off the page on the right edge there of, of page two. What's going on here? Yeah, it's still a very bullish looking chart. And obviously, one thing that me and you talk about all the time is, is that it's all relative to other fiat currencies. So we're just talking about, uh, you know, which fiat currency is the hot one in any short period of time there. But there's definitely a dollar breakout. And what's interesting about this is that that hasn't really taken too much of the wind out of the sails of uh, the commodity markets. Typically, over decades of intermarket analysis, usually commodities tend to do poorly in periods of dollar strength. And yet that doesn't seem to be uh, manifesting at all in this window. And obviously, there's, uh, there's actual real supply issues that, uh, that are overriding any uh, currency correlations. But it is interesting that we're getting a gold breakout and some of these other commodities we're just going to talk about here in a moment, at the same time as the dollar is pretty much breaking out of a one-year range. I'm curious whether the dollar will make the stick and, and what, uh, what will happen from here. Patrick, let's move on to crude oil futures on page three. Right. And so uh, the interesting part to me uh, that I wanted to observe is like, even let's say if you go back into the July, August part of the summer period where oil, uh, you know, went from uh, the mid uh, to low 70s down to uh, like to the low 60s, it was about a $10 correction. But generally, you could argue that throughout the entire 2021 year, there was uh, oil was structurally bullish and, and poised to go higher. But there are periods when crude oil goes through corrections. So the interesting part about the reversal that happened yesterday is it re rejected oil along its previous highs and and that while that in itself one day does, is not enough information to make a market call it'll be really interesting to see whether this continues to be a period where oil uh, now consolidates and or backfills some of that extraordinary bullishness we had through September and October and uh, watching whether or not it can get north of 85 in the coming days is uh, on, on my mind well, I'll tell you, in this case, I tend to actually discount the value of technical analysis because technical analysis is really based on figuring out what the traders are thinking. And I think this is more about political theater. Uh, I say that the fundamentals are still very strong for a continued crude oil rally, but the political risk of Joe Biden managing to figure out what to say to freak markets out to get the price back down to, oh, let's say where the highs were in July, you know, around, what is that, $73, $74? Um, I, I could easily see that happening from here, or I could see it just being straight uphill from here if we don't have too much political influence. I think we are going to have more political influence. So I'm waiting for more down, and, you know, hopefully I'll be smart enough to pick the bottom and, and add to my longs yeah. there. But I, I'm with you that it's a buy on dip. It's just the question is, is that does it go and, and give a much better tactical entry at a better price, right? Right. And, and, and I don't think it's possible to use technical analysis to figure out where that is. It could be right here, right now, today is the bottom. And it could easily be that we're down to, you know, low 70s again on, on some kind of really trumped up White House rhetoric about how supposedly they're going to battle with OPEC plus or whatever it is. But if that's not confusing enough, let's go to the famous Widowmaker contract, which is natural gas futures. Uh, if I said I wasn't sure what was about to happen next with crude oil, I'm double not sure what's going to happen next with natural gas. Well, you know what? I mean, uh, there was a, a seasonality trade and all sorts of, uh, you know, weather considerations and things. But uh, Nat Gas had just an extraordinary run for over six months where uh, we went from basically for rounding went from like two and a half up to like uh, six and a quarter to the upside on that Nat Gas uh, continuous contract. It was just a, an, a, an amazing bull run that had a real acceleration to the upside. But what we can really see now what I, and over the last month is, is that we 
we've uh, we've now entered more far more of a trade range up along these highs and all of that upside momentum that was built uh, throughout coming out of the summer has now dissipated the question really here is uh, maybe from a seasonality perspective is that uh, all we're going to get on this particular cycle uh, you know usually uh, once uh, once the winter has been fully priced in usually we have some especially on the continuous contract it, it rolls down the, the term structure into the summer it'll be interesting whether this is the uh, going to be at least th- for this leg of the bull uh, all that we're going to get well let's take a look at gold futures on page five boy that breakout above the trend line really stands out and uh, i think this is the real one but we'll see what happens i suppose we need to get above those may highs before we really have a confirmed breakout Right. I mean, in the end, uh, there's confirmation and then there's also when you, uh, traders actually enter. And I would argue that many traders are entering with the anticipation that will be confirmed with the break above the 1900 level where those previous highs were. But one thing to highlight was that there was an extraordinary bull run in gold in 2019 going into the summer of 2020. And uh, we really have spent a year with gold just in a deep consolidation. When you really step back and I wanted to focus on a weekly chart, so when you really step back, gold has not really done anything bearish. I think the uh, the thing that bothered everyone was simply the fact that the rest of the commodity markets were rallying and gold just didn't want to participate on the upside. And therefore, uh, many people just viewed it as dead money on the short term. But overall, I think that the consolidation still can very much be leaning toward a very bullish chart in the much bigger picture. And like when you step back and look at you know three, four, five years of charts, this uh, still looks like it's uh, it's uh, in a primary bull trend and it looks like this could be a place where it turns up uh, obviously one day doesn't make a new breakout i don't want to already be getting overly excited about uh, just a, a couple good days but this is how sometimes how bull markets begin and it'll be really interesting to see or at least another bull leg higher uh, begins and it'll be interesting to see whether this is where the breakout happens you know, both Ola and I couldn't put our fingers on this when we talked off the air, but this was before the breakout above that line really happened this week that we had this conversation, and we both just had a feeling of something feels like this is it. The, and it, it was the action and the, the vigorous action of the breakout from uh, from below 1800 and how quickly it got up to 1833. And at that point, it hadn't broken above it. But both Ola and I were feeling like it's about to. We, we, we just had a feeling. And sure enough, that's what's happening. So I think it's on. I think the, the gold bull market is back on. We'll see. But while we're talking precious metals, why don't we include platinum, Patrick? Why do we have platinum here on page six? Now, Eric, so we got this platinum chart up here on page six, but I also just wanted to note before we talk platinum uh, just on what's going on in silver. Uh, while I don't have a chart up, what's interesting is silver actually has been trading in a pretty good correlation to gold. And without silver breaking that key level above 25, where I would argue a lot of resistance levels, uh, silver does look like it's ready to go as well. And so this is where I wanted to just focus more on the other ones, like uh, in this case, platinum. And uh, what's interesting is platinum has pretty much followed the same timeline script as gold, which is more or less spent most of this year just consolidating off of its highs. And it's more or less uh, retraced about half of the prior bull run that it had from the COVID lows and is now also turning up. It'll be really interesting to see whether the entire precious metal space is breaking out together. And that would actually add uh, certainly more support to the idea that gold's going to work. Or I guess the question that begs is whether the entire commodity complex is breaking out together. And hey, take a look at page seven, wheat futures. You know, the wheat futures have actually been quite bullish, even arguably for uh, for much of the year. I mean, there was a, a little bit of a summer pullback in, in, in wheat, but really grains have, it's been a, a tale of multiple uh, grain markets. Like for instance, the uh, soybean has really actually been the dog and the laggard, but wheat broke into fresh new highs. The pullbacks are being bought on dip and continues to look very healthy. And that's a, it's really interesting to see that the grains, even corn has finally baked and then starting to roll up. It'll be interesting to see whether the grains really start uh, running from here. But if you move to base metals and look at copper futures on page eight, you know, I would have expected copper futures to be pressing new all-time highs with everything else that's going on. And they're just barely maybe bottoming, it looks like, on what may have been a consolidation. Well, Eric, you know, my thought on that is, and, and I'm just asking more as a question as opposed to a conclusion, but like maybe it's the, the drag coming from uh, the last three months of what's going on in China. Just, uh, you know, iron ore continues to dog and a lot of the industrial metals 
uh, are a bit of laggards in this window. And so it'll be interesting to see, like, maybe uh, this is just uh, offering a, a phenomenal opportunity to be buying copper at reasonable prices, because I'm sure it will resolve itself. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fundamental reasons why copper can still go much higher in this uh, EV re revolution and uh, and uh, the way that the uh, w things are evolving in the entire um, ESG movement. So nonetheless, uh, copper, it's basing, it's at a key support line. It has not broken out for a technical thing, but uh, what will be interesting to see in the next week or two is whether copper breaks 450 on the upside. I mean, if we see uh, that it uh, finally shows like it's coming back to life, it may very well be ready for another leg higher, but it certainly has not had the breakout candle that we've seen on a lot of the other commodities. So uh, certainly a very early time to be watching whether copper starts to turn bullish because it hasn't yet broken out. Let's take a look at the soft commodities. We, we've got a couple of charts for sugar and coffee futures. Yeah, like uh, overall, what's interesting is is that they're all sort of setting up like almost like where wheat was uh, a couple months ago. Uh, you know, tested a overhead resistance on numerous occasions. You can see sugar up along that high, or you look at that chart on coffee futures, retesting the high multiple times. And in both these charts, you're seeing them winding up like they're ready to go for a 52-week high breakout. Now, have they broken out yet? No, but is this is a, a really interesting moment to see whether we see many of these softs breaking out. I know like cotton has already taken off and a couple of these others are moving. So watching whether, uh, whether coffee and sugar join the party is uh, something uh, that's on my mind. Listeners, if you enjoy Patrick's chart text, you don't have to wait for Thursday every week. You can get them every single day with a free trial of Big Picture Trading. Information is on page 11 or at bigpicturetrading.com. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at MacroVoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.